Hey, this hangout is live. Uh, this is Joe Cornelie calling in from uh, Beatific, Bedfordshire. Um, Charlie's speaking uh, to us from uh, Cool, Chicago, and Luke is there in, uh, well, snowy LA. No, I don't know if it's really snowy, but Lisa, snow in LA. So, um, anyway, so um, we're having a good time. Uh, we've been reminiscing and, and looking ahead uh, as well in time. So today we don't really have an agenda. We're, we're going to do this uh, minimal MOOC week four, but i got to say this plan is not going according to plan. Week three was last week with Lisa as the facilitator uh, looking at some of the business aspects. We tried to come up with a kind of ideal candidate user of the minimal MOOC. Um, that was interesting. Um, I can screen share what we did, but then week four we were going to have uh, a new facilitator and a guest lecturer, um, neither of which of those people are here, so I think we either got a delay and, and re resume that agenda as again um, later, or uh, shift and pivot our entire minimal MOOC strategy as a more radical change. So uh, the plan was uh, midweek gathering and have a brainstorm, and I, I was a uh, I've been a little bit worried, if any of these minimal MOOC folks are, are watching, I've been a little worried that, um, you know, it's fairly ambitious. I helped choose that, that we were going to give ourselves six weeks or whatever it was to get ready and then run a course uh, right after that. And I think there's a lot of things that have to come together. So, you know, um, and if we're kind of having spring break now, it's even more difficult. So we'll see. Um, anyway, that's one thing we can talk about, what's realistic there. Um, uh, Fabrizio has been preparing this amazing uh, Pure Gaji business canvas, business model canvas page, which I think would tie in a bit with what we were doing last time. Um, and maybe we can go over that. Uh, thank you, Fabrizio, if you're listening. It's, it's cool. I'll screen share that in a second. Um, and Charlie and I met yesterday, and we started looking at another article about the patterns. So... Um, I'd be happy to show that off too. So, but for now, um, Charlie, it's maybe it, you're you're the one probably with the most timeline. So why don't we choose your own adventure, and you can decide what you think we should do now while while we have time. All right, CYA. Yeah. Um, so let's, I guess, um, well, on minimal MOOC note. I mean, I wouldn't be. I would stick with the strategy at least for the next few weeks just so you have like another I mean see how it ends out um yes. that would be my advice at least I mean, see how it goes the next few weeks before like changing too much um and then reflect and improve for the next one but uh the um so I guess I don't know do you want to talk about the uh Give Lisa an intro into the uh, Authoria paper, and she might have, that might be something where she would want to collaborate too. Yeah, I think so. so let's let's, uh, let's 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 do both of those. I'm screen sharing, so let's let's recap where we got to last time, real quick, because that was we were taking these notes on a image customer, and we were saying who is who do you if you think of some person enrolling in this minimal MOOC. Who is that person? What what is that person supposed to be like? You know, and so we thought if it was a car, maybe we're designing a car with a thirty year old female, you know, whatever young executive in mind or something. But obviously, someone else could buy that, and it doesn't take anything away from their masculinity or whatever. You know what I mean? No, sir. That was with the car, right? So you know, who cares if it's hot pink, whatever. So um, anyway. <laughs> So with this MOOC, it was a little tricky because we were thinking, oh, there's a lot of different kinds of people, and you know, we went around quite a bit, but we we had some interesting conversations about MOOCs and what what makes them work. Um, let's see, uh, we were talking about founding an organization, and I was thinking like, if we were to found, you know, if we we could have a whole course on how to start a, a organization as well, maybe that's what we were implicitly trying to study. I don't know. Um, but week four, we didn't really have a specific agenda. That's not bad. That's not bad. So, you know, I think week four, basically, it was going to be Federico, and Federico had a 
had a, had been working on a, a platform for us with a with a Moodle. Um, we haven't seen him for a while because he's been very busy. Um, and we were going to invite Howard. I don't know if anyone ever got around to inviting Howard. So both of those guys are uh, MIA, but we can take a take notes into week four. So I'll I'll go with your plan. I'm going to take notes on week four, and sort of say this sounds like a bit of a lull in our plan, um, but we can capture the initial spirit. So lull in the plan, but. We can continue. Um, so I'll take notes here. Um, now I wanted to also show this uh, thing, which um, Fabrizio has made this great page, and he's got. Um, let me see if I can zoom in. Zoom in. Yeah. So here's one by him. Pyragogy template ready to be filled out. Um, a university with online training, not only share knowledge, but also quality reputation in terms of education. Also, this is a key partner. So we find some university that already does online training, for example, and, and work with them. Um, and he's enhanced the template with a, with a little bit of other places to fill in. I had one that was kind of emphasizing this idea of building a, a co-op, which is a bit meta. You know me. I was always going to be a bit meta. And here's another empty one. So anyone who wants to... Always making it meta. Always scoring meta. Straight to the top, yeah. And just stay there. And then Fabrizio has these other, uh, other ones. So we could also try to fill that in, but maybe maybe not now. And then, yeah, uh, Charlie was saying, let's show Lisa the authoria. That's here. And Lisa, I can add you if you want to get in. But this is a fairly long document. Why don't I start with this image? Here we had this, these um, patterns in the handbook, and yesterday Charlie and I were working on this new platform, which is nice because it, it lets you use uh, LaTeX on the line and, and collaborates in a pretty easy way. So it's it's a kind of easy intro to LaTeX. Um, but we had some goals, which Charlie added a nice illustrative figure <laughs> here uh, to explain what we're trying to do um, with this document, basically. Again, another rapid thing. By May fourth, we were hoping to submit this to a conference, um, and um, yeah, I guess we can we can open it up at least a bit for anyone who's really interested, who shows up to the meetings, for example. Um, I'll do this um, and the big big idea is to use this thing as our kind of roadmap for the Pyragogy project. So it is really relevant to um, some of what we're talking about in the minimal MOOC, like what the heck are we really doing? So um, those links are in the in the chat here, and um, I'll put those links in the chat of, the, or not in the chat, in the notes of the uh, minimal MOOC page. Um, and that's about it from my intro. So um, since I'm taking notes, um, do you guys want to continue with that? Paula! Oh, Paula. Hi! I'm oh, sorry. Paula. Hi, how Paula. are you? No problem, Paolo. Great. Happy you're down to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you have an office mate. That's, uh, that's different. Hello. <laughs> it's a friend of mine. She's retired, but she's working here with me. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Never stops, huh? Hello. <laughs> cool. Um, well, so we were looking at uh, various things. Um, let me try to catch you up. So since I think like the last few weeks we had Julia, you met one time, and Dilrukshi have been working on how would we make a, a MOOC. Now, mm -hmm. Neither one of them is here today, so perhaps they've both gotten frustrated with progress, or maybe they had a separate meeting. <laughs> I wouldn't bet. Apart Sorry. from let's, uh, let's, not, let's not speculate. Let's just assume they had a all right. Yeah, I assume they had a separate. Group. Could be yeah, both of them just happened to get stuck in traffic, but you know how it is. People get frustrated and then they come back later. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We would, we would love to. They might still join. We would love to have Julia here right now, and I'm sure they have a good reason why they're not. Um, okay. Yeah, I've been, I've been frustrated. I've been thinking, gosh, are we really going to run a course? And like, we need an infrastructure. Today was supposed to be the play, the day where we would talk with Howard and say, could we use your could you use your Howard Rheingold U as a kind of front for pure It would be very natural uh, to do that. 
-hmm. but we haven't we haven't even had that conversation with him. So um, we can't assume anything. Um, maybe there's another way we could do it. So we could still talk about that infrastructure stuff. But you can use also Google Collaborate. So wait, what the thing we're doing now, or no? I mean for the you mean to set up the MOOC, the course, you can use Google Collaborate. Yeah, Google Collaborate. They, what is Google Collaborate? It's a place to to. Yeah, I don't know that either. Yeah. It's a learning environment. You can put there your courses. Yeah. All right. No, I, I, that sounds cool, and that may be just the right thing. Um, I don't know. They've been also on about Moodles and stuff, um, mm. but yeah. I don't think that the I don't think the infrastructure. Well, there's there's so there's that level of infrastructure, and then there's the question of like, would we charge people money, and if so, how much? And mm, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, I haven't found a compelling reason. So. <laughs> <laughs> See, Paul, we miss you. We need you to tell him. I miss you too. Give us the tell like it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Ah, that's not a good idea. That's not. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree. That's absolutely agree. Yeah. Yeah. If if at some point we wanted, I so yes, I think we're thinking charging people money is not inherently a bad idea in general, but charging people money in like three weeks no. for what we can deliver right now. It may be not, maybe too premature. So well, I mean, yeah, premature and also like, I mean, I would say if we're trying to build money, it should be less of a exploratory. Yeah, um, less of an experiment. Than, than <laughs> it is. Yeah, I mean, it should be. We should have like a nice structure, framework, all set up, preloaded, ready to go. Like, boom. Yeah, more professional. At the beginning of it, and we don't. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's another example, like... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Lisa. Go ahead, Lisa. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought you, you were done, so I'm sorry. No, 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 you're fine. You're fine. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think that's where it comes down to. We really haven't decided what we're doing for whom and why. Because, we're you know, we're jumping ahead to infrastructure. We don't even know what the structure of the class would be because we don't know who it would be <laughs> taking it, and we also don't yeah. know what the class would need to do. And you know, depending on the <laughs> and what we're doing, we may actually have something where people would ch charging money would be completely appropriate. Um, but again, we don't know that, so we're we're kind of asking questions. Yeah, you know, it's good to have these on the list. Don't get me wrong. But I think we're just asking questions <laughs> out of order and trying to come up well, with... Oh, yeah. That. I think we're going to support... Right, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no. So I think, I think lacking any clear customer or value or anything like that, I think charging money is not a good idea. But I think maybe if we focus on something else, we may decide, yes, it can, or here's how... Here's how we could. You know, it's hard to say. Anyway, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, I agree with that. No, 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 you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, I agree. With, I think you explained it much clearer than I was going to. Yeah, I mean, we're kind of like jumping to like step six, yeah. um, which is it's important to have step six on the list. But I mean, yeah, we're missing. We're building like the attic without like a foundation or something. Um, but, um, and then, well, I guess there's another comparison, like, so for me, like, when I, when I paid, I, I paid for my, like, English as a second language teacher certificate, in my classes where I was learning how to be a teacher, the students in the class, the, like, the, I was a student, but the English students who were coming to learn English, they got free classes. So, like, the teachers were paying, the students got free classes. This has another, you know, as an example of something where... Mm -hmm. Like you're experimenting, but like there's a component to m money is a component too. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, so I think all, I mean, this is all, these are all good questions and good explorations, and we'll make the if we do when and if we decide to do another course, like um, good. Um, well, then I would, I guess, must mm -hmm. I guess I would like to add a quick note. We don't have to really talk about it because it's still in work, but also before I forget, um, thank you, Paula and Lisa, for your um, wonderful suggestions 
to um, Amanda about the cover. Oh, and um, yeah, so the book is slowly progressing along, and hopefully it will be sometime available. But yeah, I just want to say thank you. Um, okay, so then Joe, whatever you want. It's relevant to the. Oh, do you, am I muted? Uh, no. So uh, relevant to the um, to the business thing is. So I made this thing. Uh, I want to. Let's see if I can find a link to it. Probably. Probably it's on here. Um, uh, yeah, drive. So um, basically, I made this thing. Yeah, here it is, right here. Uh, Business model canvas by Joe. Yeah. Um, so um, this one I'm pretty happy with because it basically says who are the who who is the who are the the target users. Well, first of all, let's start with us because we know ourselves pretty well. Like we know each other pretty well. We know ourselves pretty well. Um, and so with with that in mind, then we can say, well, it's the same thing. Like what would we want? You know. And so. Um, Clearly, we do not want to put money into this thing unless it, we're getting a obvious benefit, you know. And even then, I think we would all be a bit hesitant to put money into it, you know. Like Charlotte put in a bit of money towards like making the book work, and I could put in like a few bucks if I'm thinking I'll get it back quickly. But like, I don't want to pay three hundred dollars to just participate in this discussion. Now that said, I wouldn't mind making some money, as as I think uh, someone was saying. Lisa, I think, was saying, yeah, everyone would like to make a bit more extra money. I mean, who wouldn't? But the the thought I have in this design here is um, is like, um, let's consider us. So what do we want? One of the things is is possibly some support for making money. So the examples I had, if like if Dilrukshi and Julio want to organize a course and charge for it, they can do that. They can run the course. If they find people, they can put the money in their own pocket. That sounds okay. Like, we don't actually have a we don't currently have a trademark that says they can't call it Piragaji 101, and just do that. In fact, what I'm saying is they should. Um, and similarly, if Charlotte wants to take the books down to the Harvard <coughs> bookstore and sell them and like put the money that she makes from that in her bank account, I think that's okay. She can, and I think she should. Like, we can promote this stuff on our own terms. Um, now we might want to put some money into a common pool at some point. Um, if we had money, if we had income or revenues, then we could put some in, and that's where mostly the books are going right now. Um, but I think that kind of model it makes a bit more sense to me than focusing on becoming a becoming a course provision platform, because I think there's other things to cover. So so I'm I'm pretty proud of this draft of Pyragogy business model canvas. However, I'm also fairly sure it's not perfect. Um, so I wanted to put that out there. And it, it says if if people want to charge money, go ahead. More power to you. But that's not necessarily what what we're all about um, as an organization. It's more of like to help support each other in what we're actually trying to achieve. Um, you know, do you see what I mean? Like if someone says. Like, yeah, it's yeah. not that. They, like, if someone makes a big fool of themselves in the name of Piragaji, I would even say, yes, that's bad, but it's not the worst thing in the world. You know? Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I think the what you're describing that sounds very like nimble and nuanced and um, appropriate for what we're doing, and the. Um, I mean, as opposed to having like an organization per se, for profit or not for profit, having it where it's like a group of people with loose ties and common interests. Um, I mean, I'd really like that aspect of what we're doing, and I think um, if we could continue on that, as opposed to, I mean, and then separate other businesses could start out of it or something, but like having the, the overarching thing still be like really nimble and nuanced and how the community wants to take it. Um, I guess the only thing that I think would be, I've discussed this with Joe before, that I think would be good in terms of organizational structure, regardless of how we do it, I think would be to like 
register either Piragaji or Piragaji Project or something as like an official trademark, um, and then like copyright license it, um, or not copyright, but license the trademark so that anybody could use it, whatever they want. Um, but that would kind of similarly we do with like the handbook, making a public domain. Um, but yeah. Um, anyway, that's my two cents. Yeah, well, and what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is, is we could start uh, like a like a cooperative, and I don't know, maybe Paula, do you, you know with your uh, Las Andradas uh, network, any do any of them do cooperative organizations? Because I I know um, what's the one I heard about. A lot. There's a lot of cooperative kinds of organizations in Latin America. I don't know. Yes, lots and lots yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So and also in Spain, they have amazing experiences, yeah. but really incredible. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind starting something like that. I'm just thinking that it's not that the goal of that would be to make money. I'm thinking of like, like in my village, for example, like I, I buy like a bulk order of food, you know, like every six months or something. I buy like a gigantic thing of beans. Or whatever, and molasses. I could show you. I'd have to stop screen sharing, but I, you know, I can show you. <laughs> and, but I would do that myself because I'm lazy. I don't like shopping. I don't have a car. <laughs> uh, you know, I like healthy food. On the other hand, and stuff like that. So I get some really good food that way. But what I haven't yet done is I haven't reached out to my neighbors. I could say, "Hey, neighbors, I'm doing this every six months anyway. If you want to do it every three months or every month." Mm -hmm. the stuff to my my house. I'm not going to charge you anything. I might put in a, a smaller order because then the minimum order would be met, and then everyone could get some food if they wanted that. I'm not sure my neighbors would like that. My late neighbors are a bit more conservative, but like <laughs> the point is, it could be a kind of a co-op, but without trying to make money. And then if we wanted to make money later, we'd have that. But, well, what's not? What's what? It, what about what we're We've been doing. I guess I'm not seeing what's the difference between what we've been doing and that. So what, 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 what is not co-op about our current structure? So, well, yeah, there's. I, I can't argue as strongly in, adva, in, adva, in favor of it. But I, I could say, let's say, let's say, for example, let's consider a thought experiment. Like, let's say that. Okay, I'll just try to answer your question, and then I'll do a thought experiment. So, what's what's different is. The suggestion is to start an official organization, probably an official for-profit organization, but we would all be the owners of it, and we would make bylaws that would say we will not sell stock to anyone else. So it would be like we would make do a lot of formal technical stuff to, to basically say legally we could continue doing what, we, what we're doing now. And then if we made money, if we ever did make money on it, we could share the money amongst ourselves according to some. Thing. So it would give us the ability to handle money in the first place. It would give us the, the ability to handle money, and in the second place, it, it would give us the ability to own that trademark and license it. So, like in practice, would it be different from what we're doing? Okay. It could. It could be because it could allow us to grow and expand and become official, like hire someone or whatever. Is it a good idea? I don't know for sure that it is a good idea. Being completely informal without that may be, may be better. But you know, it would allow us to uh, satisfy our desire to be very formal and have lots of protocols. Do we have that desire? I'm not sure. But if we have that desire, that's what it would be good for. Um, no, that's definitely something that's been bubbling up on and off for a long time. Um, yeah, no, no, that's okay. Okay, so I didn't understand that before. So I guess I get it. So it would be sort of like, I mean, it would be like... Uh, Partnership or uh, yeah, like co-op. Okay. All right. Uh, well, that sounds cool. Um, actually, I got to. Um, I got to hop off. Um, but um, really good to talk to talk to and see you, Paula, Joe, Lisa. Thank you very much for making time. And um, yeah, I'll uh, be in touch soon. Have a good rest of the day. Um, yeah, so the, the thought experiment I had in mind was like supposing, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not saying this is the best idea, but just as a, as a thought experiment, supposing that um, things worked out fairly well with the flock project. Like they read our brief, you know, if they read our brief and they said, we want to start making these different Piragaji projects in 
what were our examples, you know, technology, uh, agriculture, whatever it was that we, we made these examples. And let's say they want uh, uh, government and stuff like that. So they say, we want to, we want to make these things. Um, we want you to help us. Then we could do that officially as opposed to just doing it as private individuals. We could say, yes, we will do it as this organization. I'm not saying for sure this is a good idea, but this is the kind of thinking that would that that we would then consider. Oh yes, we'd be better able to do it as an official organization, or maybe we'd be worse able to do it um, as a, as an official organization. I don't have an answer about that. Um, also, just a quick thought too, and and just to toss it in here. Sorry, I had to finish something up, but so I'm kind of jumping back in. But it sounds like you've got the idea of of kind of a profit sort of thing. But then I was also wondering is, is if we're talking about something like um, the APA, which kind of oversees psychology, has standards and things like that, mm -hmm. you know, and creating something like that. Does that make sense? So you, know, so you could have your profit companies could be run by different people, but then as an example, you know, or society of people in market research or educators or whatever, if you would, if you wanted to start like an organization like that, yeah, that would coordinate efforts, create kind of an academic thing as well as an application thing, that people could join. Um, that that uh, that's well, a little yeah. different, but I'm just kind of wondering if we're cr crisscrossing things because within APA you have standards and stuff like that, but then you also have. Uh, people applying psychology all over the place too. Yeah, I, I think I, that, that's coming to mind like with these mathematical societies that, that I think at one time I was a member of one. Um, hmm. Um, it might be just food for thought to see how things progress. Yeah. To see if which one might be the best fit if he, or both or neither. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and I, th I think that, the, that this also comes back to your earlier question about um, lacking a clear customer or clear value. It's it's not a good idea to charge money because who would we even charge money to? We're just making up the idea that we'd have someone to charge money to. Um, but if it was us and we say, look, we have this clear goal, then the question is how do we get there? Um, <clears throat> you know, so, so I think some of these these co-op ideas were like, I'm imagining the idea of a university <clears throat> where the people who take the courses own the university, okay? So much like we own the Piragaji project just by showing up. No one person owns it, you know? If someone doesn't show up, then it's not that they lose ownership, it's that they, they continue to ho hold their ownership because they've been investing time and effort in it, you know? It's like, um, and you get out kind of what you put in or what you want to. And so, like, imagine, though, that you could continue with that and scale it up a bit, like a few more people, a bit more organization, a bit more da-da-da, until you could then grant degrees at the end. But it wouldn't be that it would own, be owned by some, some, company, some company, and then the students would be the clients. It would actually be owned by the students. Um, who would be part of the would be part of the company? So it's a really weird approach to being a university. Again, it might not be a good idea, but it's a kind of a brainstorm about what we could do with pedagogy. And in a way, that is kind of like the APA, I think. But I'm not insisting that we should. No, I, I, and I don't know. I don't know either. I'm just looking for different ways we can kind of frame it around things we're familiar with. So, um, what do you think, Paula? Audio, though, we don't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I think that we have had this conversation before, and... Yeah. And, um, as I told you before, um... I really think we need to have a mass of 
people interested in doing this kind of profitable profitable project because it's it's for me it's like a different level of of involvement and participation and I don't think we are all um, interested or sure to make that move. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's true. So, <laughs> for example, for me, it's like you know, I have too much work to do to like get involved in like this whole new thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think that's probably true of me too. Now, I suppose. That, I suppose maybe some of the reasons to think that I'm thinking about it is that maybe I'm wondering, you know, in another year, I'm going to be looking for a job. I'm not looking for a job now, but another year I will be. So maybe we should have the conversation then in another year, when it's when it's you know when it's more realistic. Um, but I think these are these are good questions. Whether it was profit or or something else. Um, I mean, I, in a way, I think we are onto something good with this pyragogy stuff. But there's other questions. We were I was talking with this Charlie about this yesterday. Like, uh, you know, this version three of the handbook is probably going to come out one of these days soon. It's inching along, but we don't really have a good plan about version four. You know, do we want a version four? Is a good question. Yeah. Like. If we want a version four, then we don't have a plan about it, and the year is ticking on. What are we trying to achieve? And so, you know, it, it, I'm not saying I'm ready to like enroll much time or effort into the Piragaji business now. But if that was mm -hmm. the goal, and we were saying in 2016 or 17, <laughs> we wanted to build that, then okay, maybe we can slowly, slowly move in that way. But if we don't want that, then then it doesn't make sense. So, and if we're not clear what our goals are then yes, no wonder we're never going to get any customers and, and we won't probably satisfy ourselves either. We'll just be milling around. Yeah, I, I think that that's the key even with the uh, version 4. Um, it's kind of like you can always think of a million things to do in a day, but what what you need to get done or what do you need, what do you want to get done first and then figure it out from there. Mm -hmm. um, so with this, there's a million different directions we can go, but, but what do we what is achievable. I think there's an element of this where, um, you know, I've sat in meetings before where people uh, will talk and talk and talk, it's not, you know, and, and, and discuss things. And there were times where it was like, uh, it was market research. So, well, if this is the case, then what about this? If the customer is this, then what about this? And literally, if somebody was just allowed to leave the conference room for five or ten minutes, instead of talking about all the possibilities, they could come back with some information and all of a sudden, instead of talking about an infinite number of combinations and possibilities, you could start narrowing things down pretty quickly. Um, and the reason I say that is, as we apply this, or work to apply things, we may find where Piragachi fits and takes off, or where people can uh, understand it if that makes sense. And and I think then other things will follow from that. So for example, if people understand how peer you know how pedagogy is used, it's it's benefits to them, then that will bring more people to be curious about it and want to understand it. But then and from that that will drive more study and more curiosity about it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and to some extent, there's an element of try different things and see what works, and then follow what works, and that will lead you probably to the other things eventually. Right, and and connecting it back in, you know, so like Paula, you have like a couple of different case studies, and we were talking about some of these recent publications. Eventually, we'd like to filter that in, or at least the summary and the handbook and stuff like that. Um, and even the, even the handbook has kind of been this thing, like, well, let's see if it works. So it's it's in a way surprising we got as far as we did with writing it. 
However, it's not really clear that people are buying it or sell, you know, selling it or using it for anything. <laughs> yes. Writing it is only the first part of that. Well, maybe it should be the second part. I mean, yeah, as, as Lisa is saying, like if, if 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 people are really using it, then good. Um, so yeah, if we focused for a year on just figuring out who could use peer learning, peer production. I mean, we don't have to look too far. There's lots of there's lots of examples, neighborhoods, yeah, um, sure. that kind of stuff. Um, well, there's also a lot of unstructured websites um, that, that tap into this a little bit, and maybe a little bit more extreme, but the wikis, Linux, um, there's, you know, different answer websites where people will just go in and answer other people's questions. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things that um, break down some of the traditional hierarchy things and the walls, and there's a lot of power in this. Yeah. Um, so understanding where that can fit in, for example, in traditional hierarchical structures, could really give them a big boost in in businesses, for example, and in education, as being too uh, too easy. Two two ways I think that aren't that are more traditionally a hierarchy. Yeah, and, and Paulo, your most recent study that I I read the abstract of anyway, um, the one where you did this Wikipedia editing, is like yeah, that. it worked very well. Yeah, and actually I wrote the case for the handbook. I don't know if you finally read it or not. Hmm, I don't know if you sent it to me. Maybe. Yeah. Then, sorry. I'm sending out the link because I tried to put it like in the form of the case that you. Okay. But that link was a different link. That was a link to this hangout. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I have too many <laughs> windows open. <laughs> I don't know where I'm. I working now. Yeah. Here's the link. Okay. That's the one. Okay, good. No, I've never yeah, seen it, it before. It was put in one of the documents, but cool. there were so many links. <laughs> if, if I were thinking of that document, the same document, that document was a total mess. So it's yeah, like, that was a total mess. Yes, yeah, okay. you're right. Cool. I'll definitely read it. Um, we could maybe even get into version 3 of the handbook. Forget about waiting for version 4 if version 3 is delayed. So thanks, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that deals a lot with these questions. I mean, and and um, also some of these things. It's not like maybe we're not even really proposing something that's that that's totally new. It's just a question of what scale. So, like, if you were mm -hmm. to look, for example, at a like a school district or something, like a school district is a lot like a pedagogy project amongst the teachers, you know, and thinking how to best address the needs of their students or something like that, or a university is like that for trying to address the needs of their students. In the, in the case of the university, they charge money. If it's public schools, they don't because they get tax money. Now, well, how are we different? Well, we're different because at least it's in theory kind of global in scope. So. You know, so it doesn't work as the neighborhood, and it's not just in one place. So it's not like a traditional university. But if that's the if that's one of the main differences, um, yeah, I remember working with someone. We talked about defining differences, like yeah, yeah, because there are sure many many interesting experiences. Uh, in different settings, I well, I don't know if you have heard about the Media Lab Prado. Have you um, heard about it? I think you mentioned that uh, like uh, quite a while ago. Yeah, that that's one great experience about innovation. Uh, they call it um, citizen innovation, yeah. and they have uh, they have a method to develop projects. From the community with the community, uh -huh. 
And there is also another lab. It's called, I put the link there, Colabora Bora. It's also another peer, peer experiment of doing things, like different things. Mm -hmm. um, and they are very successful. They've got a funny picture of a bunch of little people with a hard hat and a flower pot. <laughs> um, yeah, so that would be another interesting question. Is it wouldn't necessarily be well that would be a more puragaji thing. Ooh, this is a cool way. It's like instead of trying to have clients where we sell people stuff, what if we found partnerships like with these people where we we would say, Look, you're interested in some similar stuff to us, not exactly the same. Could we work together on some project of mutual interest? No one charges anyone any money, but we explore some kind of theme of interest, which we did with the, the Flock Society, so we could probably mm -hmm. do it again. Um, you know, Charlotte Charlotte mentioned these design a design firm or something. Like could we design something? I don't know. Well actually this Media Lab Prado, mm -hmm. uh, they have like I don't know if they are annual or they call two times a year to propose projects and then you go there and they give you uh, like feedback with the community, they invite people like they they publish an open invitation to everybody in the world to collaborate with those projects wow. and they um, um, I think that they have this methodology like very like very, um, it's like a very efficient methodology to work together, like to to like put projects together into like a real setting. Yeah. Um, and the director actually is going and is is going to come to give us a workshop in July. Interesting. So uh huh. Yeah. Um, so I, if if you are interested in like doing something with them uh, after the worship, I can like yeah. invite him to talk to us. Cool, that sounds good. When is it in July? Do you know the date of it? Uh, just after uh, Wikimania, because they they're going to come to when. Hmm. Hello. Going to be at Wikimania because he was invited for a talk. Okay. And the workshop is just right after Wikimania. Yeah. It's the twenty twenty the twentieth or twenty first of July, just right after Wikimania. Okay. So if you're going to be here <laughs> one person. That's that would be great. Yeah, that's a possibility. Um, can't promise, but I'm writing it down, so at least I know. Um, but yeah, it looks interesting. They have this this Commons lab. Maybe that's the part of the methodology you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a Commons lab. Yeah, cool. Well, definitely. Um, yeah, teaming up with someone like this, or maybe others. You know, if we find one, you know, for those who are in the area of Madrid. Uh, that's easy because that's where they are. For those who are someplace else, mm -hmm. organization, maybe we could work. I mean, Fabrizio had this idea of these kind of networks around um, Europe and maybe the world as well. So things like that. Yeah, that that seems pretty comfortable to me. And then again, it's like you know, it's, if someone in this network wanted to run a course and charge some money for it, then they could try that. Good luck, you know. And we can help. We can help. I mean, I'm not just saying good luck to be dismissive, but I'm saying like, yes, we can actually try to help a bit, but mm -hmm. um, but maybe without distracting ourselves from whatever our our own focus is, if we have one. So that's that seems to remain a an open an open issue. So, yeah. You know, but, but maybe the other thing is maybe that's what I liked about this thing Fabrizio was making on the. Um, where to go? This Puragaji business canvas site. Um, it's like it allows anyone who wants to have their own 
yes. model to create one. If they, if they want to start a business, whether they give things away for free or charge money or whatever, they can they can create that, and then we can try to network with each other. And I think something like that I feel more comfortable with than picking the one focus for us all to do, you know, because it's, it's hard to do anything really well. Um, but if you have your ideas, and I have my ideas, and Lisa has her ideas, and Fabrizio has some other ideas, and we all work on that and share them, then maybe we can benefit from that. So, um, anyway. Um, okay, I'm going to close that off. So any other things today? Should we close it? It seems like a short meeting, but there's only three of us. So <laughs> But um, well, what happened? Well, I have been absent from the last meeting. So, so you are going to offer the course? Uh, we're still in this kind of preparation of planning the course, and I think the two main people have maybe either decided to meet separately or come back next week. I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe, they, like Charlie said, maybe they both independently had other issues today, so I don't know. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, this, this document of minimal MOOC has our notes from the last couple of weeks. I think we've been trying to figure out what we're doing. I think, to recap, I think, you know, Julia seems to say, look, it's, it's fairly clear. I've run a course before. It's not rocket science. We just, you know, write a syllabus, create a platform, and start running the course. And I agree, okay. that's probably true. So if, if that's the goal of, uh, you know, making a course about peer learning, then, then she mm -hmm. can. Maybe what we're doing is only getting in the way. I don't know. Um, um, and then, uh, yeah, that's about it. So we've just considered okay. options about that. So next steps for us, for the handbook or for next goals? Ahead. Yeah. On that note, there's another document I'll show you here. Um, this is something else that basically we've been trying to use the Puragaji pattern catalog as a. Okay, I'm gonna have to screen share it, but here's another link. I'll put it at the bottom. Paste. Authoria. So there you can view it, and if you would like to edit, then then you can. Um, but we'll have to invite you. So um, I would like to invite you to do that. So I will add you as a co-author there. Um, so ba basically this takes the whole pattern catalog and it says out of those, what are the, the next steps we've had? Um, and can we really use this outline of next steps to address our concerns and our ambitions. So yesterday, yesterday we did a quick brainstorm like can we become a knowledge capital competitor, collaborator, or frenemy with Wikipedia like mm. stack exchanges, you know. So um, Lisa you mentioned the Q&A sites like we don't probably want to make another Q&A site but can we become something that fits into that world maybe. Um, can we resolve some of the questions that have been hanging around about whether or how or when uh, to make money in this project, and I think today we made some steps on that. Like, it's no pressure; we don't have to make money immediately. But if someone wants to, they can try. So I think that's an okay answer. It seems fair to everyone. Um, some current problems: newcomers with new ideas that are a bit different from our ideas. This is actually kind of cool, but it, it's actually very cool. But it takes work and can be a bit stressful. So of course, the project doesn't work without new people coming, and so that that's actually a good thing, obviously. Um, um, so how do we continue with that? I think we can be flexible. Um, we talked about Handbook 3 and 4 has no process, <clears throat> and if we're going to do it <coughs> technically different, then maybe we'll have to do some technical work. Um, and then recently, we remember there was a year where we were sending all those abstracts and things off. Uh, yes, 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 I remember. So we were thinking, can we make a more organized version of that, like, you know, and I think that would be a really good thing to just focus some energy is like, because we have no shortage of ideas. And Lisa was saying, you know, yeah, people could talk and talk and talk about all those different ideas. 
But if we sort of start to say, okay, this thing has a deadline, and that's actually a priority, and we all care about it, so we really have to do it, you know, that, that's more useful. Um, and so this document right here, like this thing we're looking at, I think will be useful for that because it, it has all the patterns, and we've got a plan to improve that and possibly do it by May 4th. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> and you know, like shorten it, make it more accessible, and make it more useful for us. Like, w what are our real next steps? Like, what are the things we really want to do? And, um, and does our does our handbook, does our um, pattern catalog and stuff address that? So I don't know if we'll get there, but it, at least it's a fairly concrete thing, and it's much yes, yes, yes. much shorter than the whole handbook. I mean, this is the whole content, and it's yes, too yes, long. Yes. So rather than adding, like we really want to cut things away from this to like make it shorter and more effective. Mm -hmm. um, what's the real point? So mm -hmm. it's, like 30, it's thirty pages, I think, double sided right now, you know, and and we want to just distill that. So I will definitely add you two both to that. You'd be very um, very valued as collaborators and contributors to that. Um, and I also think the cool thing, one last thing, is that this thing actually does hook into GitHub in the back end. Like if I press save. Oh, save wow, GitHub. great. So like it would be a good step towards um, towards moving our content over there if we want to. Which to would GitHub, make yeah. Make it easy yeah, to print mm -hmm. stuff. Go ahead. Yeah, you said once that you needed help with the technical stuff and that we need to learn how to use GitHub and LaTeX and everything so that you yeah. were but, not a But I think this will solve a lot of that now. Like I'm exporting the document. Like it is LaTeX and like it saves into GitHub. So like actually if you can like point and click and edit and kind of follow the format that you see, then at the end you get something. And I'm clicking download. I want to see if it works. Yeah, there it is. Okay, affiliation not available. We have got to figure that out. But there they, there it is. Charlie's picture is in there. Ah, oh, sorry, kind of... the network is awful. Yeah. Oh, I'm not even. You're not. You don't see that anyway. Stop. Let me show you. So, one more time. There. Share. Mm, oh. Great. So there it is. It exports it. It's not. It's not super nice, but that part is easy compared to just making the content up here. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it is pretty pretty useful. So I'll add you to um, this evening to that as co-authors, and um, we can take it from there. So, um, cool. And I know Charlotte was traveling today, so I, I guess she'll probably be back uh, next week. And maybe some of the other people who were missing will also be back. You never know what, what's going on. <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they had spring break and a lot of work. With them. Well, we had spring break last week, not last week. Did the you have week fun? Last week. Yeah, it was great. Okay. Your friend <laughs> is getting getting tired of our conversation. You can tell her. Um, cool. Well, nice to see you again. And nice yeah, but we made too. a little bit of a little bit of progress. I feel good about this meeting. So. Um, so yeah, I look forward to next time. Um, okay. Cheerio. See you. Good I'm luck. Look at Pardon, Lisa. I just said I'm take. I'm looking forward to taking a look at the pattern catalog. Thank you. Yeah, I, I can send her on a PDF too, just in case that's easier to read than the, the website. I'll, I'll send this thing I just downloaded, and then I I'll. I think the website is cool. This author, what? Author, yeah. Yeah. The one thing about that is you will need. Uh, you do need to create a login. So. Okay. But you can just use a Google account, I think, to log in as well. So yeah, I'll send it looks I'll good. Send invites right now, so you can like do it in a really hand. Yeah. What do you think about a new a new pattern? A uh, role of the role of the broker. We don't have that, and I think it's important. Broker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, should I use the um, Ricarte uh, email address? Yes, yes. Okay, or the other one, okay. All right. Yeah, well, so we can add one, but I think uh, uh, let's be, try to be as, I think we should try to be succinct and keep this. Yes, 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 yes. But yes, we can yes, add we them. To. The more we add, then then it yeah. forces us to be succinct with the other ones, which I think is, is good. We need that because it's, it's, this is meant to be, 
super easy to use. And yeah, yeah, yeah I think, but I, absolutely, I think we should add them. So my thought with this, this is like, turn all of these things from like a paragraph into like one sentence. So like super short summaries, make it really super simple and precise, um, if we can. And Lisa, I have your email. Uh, Lisa. Okay. So, author. Paste. Okay. So I've added you two now, and um, yeah, have a look when you have a chance. And I'll Great. get some rest. I think I maybe go off. Go to sleep already. No, I don't. Oh, good. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> we'll see. Probably I just need to go for a walk. Anyway, okay. Take care. Okay. Talk to you again soon. Take care. See you. Take care now. Bye. Bye.